you are a human being, and as a human being, we can together define profound humanness that we have in common. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to do with this category of consciousness and being is identify looking inside ourselves to see what makes us human uh, in a universal sense. So I am assuming that all of you and all other human beings on the planet are capable of consciousness, of consciousness in the same way that I am. Now that can be wrong maybe, but that, that's been my experience so far is that I haven't met a human being who isn't capable of, of being conscious. You could assume from what you actually experience that I'm the only conscious being in the universe. The rest of you are just robots. But I'm, I'm conscious, I'm unique, I'm the only one that has this kind of inner experience. But uh, that's a very radical hypothesis of which there is no evidence. <laughs> well, I think you're, in one sense, born conscious, that the fetus before it's born is conscious. It's, it's elemental to your creation. It's, it's, it's just different. Just as there as toes are there and eyes are there, and it's something that's developing. Uh, uh, and then it has tools like uh, the mind and, and what the mind takes in and, and systematizes. And so your, your capacity for realizing and living your consciousness grows, but uh, it doesn't, it's not something you have to create or, or, or you know, it's, it's, it's given. We're all on a journey. Obviously, we're not the same set of awarenesses that we had as a two-year-old. We, we have some big changes in our lives where we become more conscious or more capable of accessing consciousness and living out of it than we had in an earlier stage, and that never ends. I mean, your, your journey goes on uh, from birth to death. Uh, but this is a, a, how would you say it, a sanctification of your being uh, that you're capable of through the experiences that you're having. When you're with people, maybe a whole group of people like this sometimes, who are aware of and discovering their being or new aspects of their being, you, you know there's a synchronicity uh, connection going on at an extremely deep level. As a matter of fact, when you talk about finding a partner who's a soulmate, uh, that's what you're looking for, somebody who not only makes an emotional connection and a sexual connection, but a, a being connection, <laughs> chi to chi. Huh? Uh, and you know when that's happening, if you're able to be sensitive to your being, uh, you know that that person is coming from the same place or a similar place, and that we have a fellowship going on here that has to do with profound humanness and not just our last best ideas about it. That's why we need more than one being in our life, is because <laughs> just being married to one person doesn't fulfill all of your needs for connection. Uh, uh, I mean, almost every wife needs other women in their life besides men, her man, because women just have some sensitivities that males have more trouble having. <laughs> and so you, you need a wide spectrum of human beings to satisfy your need for connection. Our old picture, and we all have to have pictures of things, was a double deck picture. Heaven and earth, and in terms of the individual person that you are, soul and body. And this old picture it, it sort of symbolized a kind of unbelievable separation between two realms of being. And somehow the soul was a part of enigmas of a sort that were on another level than, than body. Body had to do with your participation in it, so to speak, and soul had to do with your participation in, in your I reality in some sense. And we sometimes use the word mind for this. Mind meaning everything that went on inside your being. Uh, we sometimes use the word consciousness. We sometimes use the word will. Anyway, there's great arguments have gone on between the importance of mind over will or will over mind and so forth. <laughs> 
or mind over body and uh, body relation to mind. And uh, this has been our, our picture for thinking about these things. Now, what we're discovering, or I think, in our time is that will is an aspect of consciousness. Consciousness is not only taking in reality, but it's putting forth. And will is that dynamic of consciousness that is enacting something in the world. So it's consciousness that's doing your doing. And consciousness is also doing your, your taking in or, or being at attention to things. And we're using the mind to take in uh, uh, us, our consciousness of things. We're also using the mind to work out our putting forth uh, things. So consciousness has become a category different than mind, and will has become a category that is a part of consciousness. Now let me draw another picture, which is a more adequate picture, the holding how these things might be understood better by us in our strange time. Consciousness is like a, a center inside us. I don't know where inside us, whether it's inside our toes or our heart or our head, but somehow inside us there's a centering because we could look in there and see consciousness centered. Uh, we look at, see ourselves centeredly looking at our center. Uh, and then this consciousness that's center is surrounded by interior functionings, the mind. Now perhaps the mind is the same thing as the brain, but the mind is seeing the brain from the inside. You see that? The brain is seeing the mind from the outside. And it's a very different experience to look at somebody's brain and see all the electrical and chemical stuff going on, even though you know that's their mind. If they that they're looking at from the inside, and it's kind of fun to have somebody look, look at things and, and have somebody else look at them from outside here, but anyway, it's the experience of a brain is exterior to the inner person, and the experience of the mind is the interior experience of consciousness of your brain. Also, the body as a whole out here is an experience of the world, but interiorly, what we're experiencing is feelings. I'm going to put the word toe here because there are feelings in our toe. <laughs> your whole body has feelings. When you move your muscles, you can feel those movements of muscle from the inside. Some of the chemical uh, inside activity you can feel with your consciousness, uh, like you have a indigestion or something, you can certainly feel that. Uh, you can feel pain, you can feel pleasure, and so forth. There are all kinds of feelings. Emotional feelings are very complex inside feelings that have to do with how you're relating as a consciousness to the whole of your experience. And then there are very subtle kind of feelings like light and vibrations of sound and taste and uh, smell and so forth. Uh, so, interiorly you have feelings that are somehow related to your body, and you have thoughts uh, that are somehow related to your brain and total nervous system. And then, there is an outside again of your particular body and its interior going on uh, There is the there is the world around you. Uh, and then there is this something else going on, and that is the fact that consciousness is centered in you, but it's, it's also like a, a, I don't know what, a pattern of wave that surrounds you. There's a subtle vibration of things going on around your body uh, in this uh, world around you. I mean by emotions is something coming from the body somewhere uh, that is registering the quality of our conscious experience of reality. 
So consciousness and reality are both contributing. I mean, if a truck runs over your toe, you have emotions about that. <laughs> uh, if somebody is scaring you to death, you have fear emotion. Uh, if there's some challenges, uh, you have angry emotion. But, so uh, all your emotions are registering your reality is confronting you, and also whoever you are. If, if you're uh, this kind of person, and, and, and the reality is challenging that kind of person, you have an emotion that is both telling you who you are and what you're facing. Anyway, emotion is a great capacity had even by cats and dogs and all the mammalian species. All the mammalian species have strong emotional feelings. And those emotional feelings help you make good decisions about reality. If you had part of your brain destroyed and no longer capable of emotions, you would be very much handicapped in, in making decisions. But emotions are that kind of a feeling that's a very sophisticated part of your brain and a very sophisticated part of your life. While those other feelings that you mentioned, like, like uh, sensory feelings and feeling your emotions and, and feeling pain and so forth, uh, those are more ancient in your evolution. Your sexual feelings go way back to the reptilian uh, part of your evolution and, and, and way on back even further, I think, than your amoebas felt uh, pain and pleasure and so forth. So feelings is an enormous topic. Emotions are a highly developed form of feeling uh, had only by the mammalian species in, in, in full intensity. It may be a little bit of a mammalian, a little bit of feeling, emotional feeling in reptiles, but it's minimal. Your reptiles just cannot be the same kind of pet as your dogs and cats because they just do not have that emotional quality that allows that kind of emotional connection with you. Well, the dog or cat will snuggle up to you as just a very important part of their life, and so on. The truth of which is to be tested out in your own life by looking with your own consciousness inside your own body and seeing if what you name as emotions are not that kind of signal as to who I am in thinking about what and what I'm facing and how I, the, the relationship is, is registering to me. Now, say a little bit more about consciousness itself. It is a attentionality. And an intentionality. Attentionality means paying attention, uh, taking in. Your consciousness takes in things. Uh, it pays attention to things. In that sense, knows things. So attentionality has to do with the knowing aspect of being conscious. Intentionality has to do with the doing aspect of being conscious. And you use the mind to do your doings, but it's consciousness that's doing. When you say, raise my arm, consciousness did that. The muscles helped, but the muscles just did what they were told. It's not that there's some physical form that's raising my arm, really, although physical forms are used, of course, and the mind is used. But raise my arm is a command conscience is giving to my arm going up. And everything you do is originating in this mysterious consciousness, using your mind, using the muscles to do it. Well, your being includes attentionality to the world around you and intentionality to doing something in the world about you. So being is just the depth beneath this polarity of knowing and doing. Uh, but it's very different to operate out of your being and your doing than just simply uh, operating out of your last best idea. You see, if you're going from ideas to doing, you're living shallowly compared to going from being to doing. You know, your sports figure, especially basketball, bas that was my favorite sport. There's a time in playing basketball when you get in these zones. You just can't miss the basket. No matter what you do, your body, your being, if you like, knows how to shoot that ball. And it just goes in. And when you're in that zone, 
other basketball players that are good know that, God, that player's in his own. Uh, we got to interrupt that. <laughs> We're going to get beat here. Uh, well, that's a weird experience to have, to feel yourself acting out of your being instead of acting out of your, I should make this shot. I missed the last shot. And I want oh, well, you to make this one. And so on, you know. And, and if you're running a business or if you're uh, giving a talk like this, there's a difference between operating out of your being in relation to other beings who are operating out and operating out of things I've assembled in my silly mind only. Well, e ego is something you've invented. You see, your ego is a construction you put together to kind of approximate who you are. Uh, so it is, there, there are different signals. Yeah, there are different signals coming from my approximations and my actual reality. So uh, a lot of what comes from my approximations doesn't work out. And so living from your ego runs into challenges that uh, clue you that you're living out of self-constructed delusions. But, but when you're acting out of your being, you're sort of in, invincible. That is, there's nothing can stop you from acting out of your being. Uh, death itself doesn't seem to stop you. You can act out of your being right through the whole experience of dying. And the same is true with knowing. Your mind doesn't know anything. Your mind knows nothing. It's consciousness that knows, using the great facilities of the mind. This is not a depreciation of the mind. The mind is a computer of amazing capability. I mean, some of the artificial intelligence we've created with our computers are amazing, but they really just speed up certain little things that the human mind can do. And there's a lot of other things that the human mind can do that the best computer cannot do. As a matter of fact, the consciousness of a cat is way beyond what any computer, however powerful, can do. This is the amazing thing about consciousness. Of course, the computers are very helpful in extending the capacity of our mind into things. But the knower, the attentionality factor in your consciousness is your consciousness. And, and this an intentionality. Now, how is conscious related to the mind? We've always talked talk that, but just to get started, it, just as conscious is not the brain, conscious is not your toes, and it's not your brain, uh, it's not your mind, it's not your feelings, it's something deeper than toes, feelings, mind, and brain. And as we observe other animals, we can see that they're conscious. Not in the same way we're conscious, but they don't have the same minds we have, but we know our cats are conscious. We know our dog friends are conscious. Uh, I mean, they don't have to have words to be conscious. They don't have to have sentences and paragraphs to be conscious. They don't even have to have dance and music and, and other art forms to be conscious. Uh, my cat knows that when she scratches on the door, that means let me in. And she knows exactly where her food bowl is. And she knows how to get there from her memory without any need whatsoever of language. Now, we also have that kind of consciousness, that kind of consciousness that uses, I call it, uh, multisensory reruns. That in our brain, uh, everything we've experienced can just rerun at, at the moment's attention. When you, you see something, to interpret that something, our brain reruns every experience that we've ever had in that area to interpret it and help us understand what's happening. Uh, so a cat has a great, well-organized intersensory re rerun. You're thinking of your dog. Uh, your dog has a smell rerun that you don't have. <laughs> it's amazing the kind of intelligence dogs have about smelling. A world of sense. They can find trapped human beings in the snow drifts that we would never smell in 100 years because we don't have that particular sense developed the way they do. They live in a smell world that we don't even understand, but we live in a similar kind of inter multisensory reruns. Have five different senses, some people, like they said, and all five of these immediately go into multisensory reruns 
I mean, the mind is, is very sensitive to the signals that are coming in. And we have, as human beings, at least five, the amoeba has a couple. Uh, but those sensory inputs come in, and the mind of the amoeba or the mind of the human puts those into reruns that you can use to anticipate the future better. Uh, so so it, thinking and those sensory feelings are very closely related. And, and, and if, if your thinking is not pretty much related to what you're sensing, you're, you're not going to survive or not going to live very effectively, right? Your consciousness of things is always ahead of your mind. Uh, thinking about it, especially consistently you know, and well-ordered fashion, is a, is a reflection that comes after your consciousness is already conscious of it. So what an intuition tends to be is your conscious speaking to you beyond what your mind knows at the moment. Uh, so you're always sensitive, you're always having knowing experiences going on that are far greater uh, than what you've thought through, right? And sometimes you wake up in the morning having dreamed about something with your consciousness that your mind is surprised to know <laughs> as you begin to understand it. Uh, so intuition is just, to me, it's just a very normal kind of thing of experiencing consciousness ahead of your mind. We also have that level of consciousness that the dog and cat and other animals have. Uh, but we have something in addition. We have a mind, a brain in addition to these other species of mammals that we're so familiar with. We have, we have words. We have symbols. And symbols are something different than multisensory reruns. Symbols stand for whole groups of multisensory re reruns. Take the, take the symbol four. A cat just doesn't have four. Four cats, four move food bowls, four clouds, four, you know, doesn't have that capacity to use the word four or that two plus two equal four. All that's missing in the cat's intelligence. But it's not missing in our intelligence. Even a young child, just a year old, has unbelievable capacity for symbol using, for language, for art, for music and all kinds of things of that nature. So and obviously, our consciousness is, given, is being given tools that uh, other species in the, just do not have, or don't have it developed in that, to that extent. It may be that there are uh, certain chimpanzees and porpoises or, who are on the edge of springing <laughs> into symbol using. Uh, they say elephants celebrate their dead by standing and circling their, their trunks. Maybe that's a beginning. We have a, a development of consciousness. It's as if evolution has, that consciousness is a, this something in the universe that has a propensity to become more conscious. And that's an interesting way of looking at our evolution. And we begin with conscious amoebas back here, conscious singular cell animals that are conscious, they take in reality. They make some decision about it. They do something to go get their food, to get away from danger. So every time you see something alive, it's conscious to some degree. And what makes it alive is its consciousness. And when it's killed, it's no longer conscious. And this consciousness wishes to become more conscious. And in our amazing bodies, minds, persons, that consciousness takes on a, a substance, takes on a reality that's absolutely astonishing in its capacities to be conscious, to be conscious of consciousness itself and to ask itself, what in the hell is consciousness? <laughs> and, and what in the hell is this reality about which I am conscious? I think there, there, there is a way in which we sort of know when we're really off track. And uh, despair is one of the clues. Uh, that the, you're just bored with life. You're bored with life. Well, you know, life is not boring. It's, it's actually, it this, if you're aware of it, it's incredibly demanding and, 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 and exciting. Uh, and it's, to have the opportunity to be a human being is, 
is wondrous beyond belief, even if you have no legs and no arms, <laughs> you're still a wondrous being. And what we call sin and malice and bondage and despair, <laughs> these are all malfunctions in being your being. They're, they have attitude toward understanding things. Uh, misunderstandings come out of your despairs and, and malices and so forth. But the essence of sin, or in such words as that in our heritage, do not mean simply misunderstandings. They mean not being your being, which works into misunderstandings, works into bad actions as well. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth and said of it, all it is is good. So in the beginning, you're good. But it took us about 20 minutes, I think, to begin the evil <laughs> creation perversions. And, and so we're all uh, now experiencing original sin, if you like. We're all experiencing <laughs> mis misperceptions and, and mistakes about the way life is. Well, the things happen to you that help you recognize your dysfunction. And of course, giving it up, giving up the dysfunction, restores you to a certain degree to your, your consciousness. Then you have to decide. For part of what conscience is, is intentionality. It's deciding to have this consciousness and this world that you're conscious of as your life, which is a very courageous thing to do. When you think about the world we have to live in today, I mean, when I think about the United States of America and the Congress of the United States of America, I think maybe we should move to Sweden. But I'm living here. This is my own nation. This is my world. Uh, to be a part of this particular society and so forth. To be conscious of the despairs and predicaments and horrors of my nation is my life. And, and it takes courage to be a part of that. And courage to be as helpful as I can to other human beings to experience that and correct it and so forth. Uh, so it is a kind of a mystery how it is that we grow up. Uh, but I think this is the stages that I've experienced as I become aware of the dysfunctions. I become aware of the great gift of, of consciousness to me as a human being. And I have to decide it, accept it, and, and, and intentionally live it. Uh, and that then puts me in a better place to take in the next crisis <laughs> and, and the next collapse of some dysfunction and the acceptance and the acceptance of that. And the, so something like that. The Chinese have some exercises called Qigong and Tai Chi. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. I mean, one of the great exercises of the, both of those disciplines is gathering and sinking the chi. And if you, it's a feeling you are gathering something when you gather, and that you are feeding your original mouth something you've gathered. This is the Chinese insight. You ask them, what is qi that you're gathering and, and centering here? What, what is this qi? And they say, oh, it's an energy. Why don't we just sort of guess that the energy they're gathering and feeding is consciousness? That sort of gives us a picture of consciousness we may not have. Let me illustrate this. Close your eyes and hold your hand up, your right hand up. And tell me when you feel something. No. Okay. We didn't have cheek to cheek, but we had chi to chi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that may seem like a little teensy proof of this mysterious fact that consciousness is like a wave that goes out to the stars, very intense right close by, and extremely intense in this center. And everybody is such a mysterious being. <laughs>